Hi, my name is Connor Larkin, and welcome to episode five of my New Year's practice routine. And five is a very appropriate number because this is the first episode we're going to talk about five string bass. And in addition to talking about five string bass, we're going to take all the previous material I've talked about in the past four episodes, and we're going to just reapply all of that stuff to two octaves. And the reason being is because playing things in two octaves on the five string is actually really easy compared to playing on four string. So my day's D flat major. If I wanted to play D flat major in two octaves on my four string bass, I'd have to do something like this. Which is a good thing to be able to do, but on a five string, it's much easier. Check this out. So just with one simple shift, I can play D flat major in two octaves, which by the way, let's go over the notes real quick. D flat, E flat, F, A flat, B flat, excuse me, D flat, E flat, F, G flat, A flat, B flat, C, D flat, okay? So let's go through um, all of the arpeggios of this scale in two octaves. So we got D flat major, E flat minor, F minor, G flat major, A flat major, B flat minor, C diminished. And then we're back to D flat. Let's see if I can play that all at once. Okay, then we got the seventh chords. So that's D flat major seven. Then we got E flat minor seven. F minor seven. G flat major seven. A flat seven. B flat minor seven. C minor seven flat five. D flat major. Seven. Okay, so let's see if I can do that all at once. Okay, so those are the seventh chord arpeggios. Now what we can also do is we can talk about some chords a little bit. Now this is where things get a little more interesting because what I like to do on a five string bass is I like to take the basic chord shapes, um, which would be like, okay, so like here be D flat major, E flat minor, F minor, G flat major, A flat major, B flat minor, C diminished, and D flat major. And I like to take that bass note and put it down one octave. So now I have this. See, on the seventh chord, what I like to do is I like to replace the G flat with the A flat. 
that point it kind of becomes an A flat in first inversion. But I like that sound a lot more than this sound. And whenever I talk about chords on my channel, I always talk about like actually playing chord shapes that you can use in a band scenario. I probably wouldn't want to do this one. But I would do that one. So here's what they all sound like together. Okay, now what I also think sounds really good on a five string bass is seventh chords. Now we're gonna do the same principle we just did with the triads, but here's what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the fifth out of each note in the scale or each chord in the scale, I should say. So what I mean by that is we're gonna play D flat major seven, but we're not gonna have the fifth. And that's gonna happen with every single chord. So here's D flat major seven. That's just root, third, and seventh. And it's gonna be root, third, and seventh for each one of the uh, notes in the scale. So we have D flat major seven, E flat minor seven, F minor seven, G flat major seven, A flat seven, B flat minor seven, and then C minor seven flat five, but check this out, there's no flat five, so it's actually the same shape as a minor seven. And then we're back to D flat major seven. And then what we could do is we could just do the same exact trick. We're just gonna take that bass note and put it down an octave. So now we have this. Okay. So that's pretty much all I could think about when it comes to just practicing a major scale on the five string bass. There's tons of other things you can do. There's permutations of the scales, there's permutations of the arpeggios, there's different kinds of chord voicings. But I think if you just get yourself in the habit of just at least starting here, you can do some jumping off points with each of these concepts. Remember, I'm just talking about scales, arpeggios, and chords. Be as creative as you want with these things. And, you know, um, really a challenge I would like to present to you for string players, if you're still listening for whatever reason, is, um, challenge yourself to take these concepts I've talked about and try to apply them to your four string because with all that shifting in mind, that's going to make it a lot more challenging. It's, it's actually going to make you a better bass player. It's going to help you understand your fretboard better. It's going to help you with your technique. It's going to develop your ear. So challenge yourself to take these concepts on the five string and see if you can apply them to the four string. Now, if you're thinking, well, what about the chords, Connor? Well, check this out. What if I took these chord voicings like this D flat major seven? Okay, well, here's the root, here's the third, and here's the seventh. So if you're working on your tapping, you can actually still do that chord voicing if you want to, and you could take it through the entire scale. Uh, let me see if I can do that. So we got, uh... Eh, I gotta work on it. But that's kind of my point is like, you know, you work on this stuff. It's just some different things to just try out and just mess around with. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment. Or, you know, if you want private lessons, you could also just email me directly. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.